Hi everyone, Sandra here, and welcome back to our basic prepping series, uh, Being Prepared, or How to Be Prepared. And this is our last installment, our last episode, but it's a useful one. This is on lighting and first aid. So to get started, first things first, candles. Everybody has them. Um, candles are good for several different reasons. Um, they don't put off as much light those people think. I mean, if you've ever been in any kind of situation where, you know, you don't have any power and you start digging out your candles, you'll realize it's like, holy cow, I need a lot of candles to even, you know, come close to half of the lighting I had when my power was on. So one of the things um, I like to do, this is a bigger candle. It's a two wick. Those are the types of candles I like to have on hand, two and three wick candles, because they will put off um, more light, especially if you can, you know, maneuver them around like um, a mirror or something. But they're also bigger, so they will last a lot longer. So this one has a, a really wide top, and I like that it has this lid because in one of these, you can um, put a little book of matches or a lighter or whatever just so if the power goes out you know right away where it is and you can get it lit right away you know um, clear glass so you know even if it's way down here like this one is you're still getting light um, I don't recommend getting many tapers or uh, votives because they do burn out a lot quicker votives though can be helpful in say a bathroom overnight or something just so you have a little bit of light, especially if they're made with um, beeswax, because the beeswax candles will last the longest. Um, I try to only get soy or make my own. I make my own candles out of soy. Uh, beeswax is a little more pricey, but try not to get the, the, um, the word escapes me. The cheaper candles, you know, they burn out a lot quicker. Begins with a P. Can't remember the name of it. Anyhow, let's move on to another one. This is an oil lamp. It looks like the old-fashioned, or still made today, kerosene lamps. Um, I don't have any kerosene lamps. Um, I'm, I just have never really used them, but I do have several of these oil lamps. Um, you can pick these up at almost any big box store in um, camping store for that matter too. In the big box store, look in the camping section or around where they sell their candles and also if they have it, pick up some extra wick because that would come in handy. You can also get the kerosene lamps at a camping store as well. What I do like about the oil lamps is, yeah, they do make an oil for this and it works fine. Um, I've used one of these um, up at the cabin and it, it works really nice. This too doesn't put off as much light as you would think, but it's it's still pretty good. Um, you don't want to put the wick up too high on these things or they'll smoke. But with the oil lamp, if you should happen to run out of lamp oil, you can use a lot of different oils. Mainly um, like uh, food grade oils. You can use olive oil or corn oil. You can even melt down shortening tallow lard if you have to. Not saying that smell real great, but if you had to do it, you could. And so that's another option. Also up at the cabin, I have several different types of solar lights. And um, we use those quite frequently. The only problem I have with solar lights for um, a natural disaster or something is if your disaster happens to involve rain or snow. So after the first time you use your solar lights, are you going to be able to recharge them? Now I do have one type of solar light where it can be charged outside by the sun or you can plug it into a wall and charge it. But you still end up having that problem of you don't have power. So how are you going to, how are you going to get that lit? So for, for those types of disasters, the solar lights may not be the best option. But um, not every natural disaster involves that. So, you know, there's plenty of times when you don't have power, 
but the sun's still shining. So that, that right there is another option for you. And then lastly is um, battery operated. Now I have a really cool lantern that I love in my closet up at the cabin. There's no lighting in that closet at all except for that lantern. And my son gave it to me a few years back and it does take big batteries and um, but it works great and it has a switch on it where it can be really dim. There's a knob on there where it's just like an overnight night light and then um, you can shine it really bright if you need to. So those are just a few options you should think about when um, preparing for any type of disaster or power outage. Um, you can even make your own candles, you can make your own oil lamps. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description box for, excuse me, for stuff like that. Yowzers, I am having a problem with a dry throat today. Sorry about that. But moving on to um, first aid. Now, um, a lot of times people hurt themselves when there's um, no power and you're in the dark and you just might be doing things you normally wouldn't during a power outage or some sort of catastrophe or whatever. You know, you you might be having to cut down tree limbs because they're blocking your driveway or your road. I mean, you, any number of things you may end up doing. Or you may not be able to get to a store or a pharmacy or the doctor or a hospital. So it's always good to keep some first aid supplies on hand. And so a few of them that I like to start off with is cold medicine because you don't know what time of year, if you're sick. Or get... I like to think that if someone in your house or even your neighbor, a friend, is really ill and you can't go and get the supplies that you need, what would you wish you had on hand? This is good stuff. Um, not this particular brand, but cold medicine. Always good to have cold medicine on hand. Pain relievers, probably number one thing. Because if you're in pain, someone you love is in pain, it just makes everything that much worse. So have a variety of them. Um, you know, what you and your family take, or you don't know who's going to end up at your house, and you don't know who you may want to be able to help. So have a variety of all of them. Right here, just on hand, I have ibuprofen and aspirin. But you, you could also have um, some Tylenol on hand or, you know, uh, look at the stores, the different varieties of pain relievers they have, maybe even for children. Just um, go ahead and keep these on hand. They don't expire as soon as you think they do is what's marked on here. There's been a lot of studies on that. But go ahead and research that. You can also rotate them out like you do everything else you've been prepping for. But make sure not to run out because, I mean, you really want to have these if you happen to need them. And then we're just going to do like some of the basic first aid stuff. So this is a triple antibiotic ointment. Great for anything from cuts, scrapes, to light burns. I would not put this on a second or third degree burn, but, you know, like first degree just you know what I mean so this could really come in handy band-aids get all different sizes because you just never know what you may need them for you know you can use a small one for a blister a bigger one for a, a big cut and you want to have plenty on hand because you want to be able to switch these out like I said in a previous video um, it's mainly disease and infections and stuff like that that hurts people from these natural disasters not um, the disaster itself the majority of the time it's everything that happens right after that because people don't have what they need they don't have the services that they're accustomed to maybe don't have clean water they can't get to a doctor you know things like that so you want to make sure if, if anyone were to get hurt, 
that you do change out those band-aids pretty frequently. Keep keep whatever that uh, wound is clean. Use your triple antibiotic ointment, and yeah, hopefully everybody will be fine. But uh, besides that, then I have uh, gauze, big gauze pads, buy gauze, different sizes, whatever. And if they don't stick themselves, then make sure you have tape to stick them on. These things are fairly inexpensive, you know, so each time you go to the store just for a little something or grocery shopping or whatever, pick this stuff up. There's all kinds of little things that um, maybe when you're in the first aid aisle of the store that will jog your memory and it's like, oh yeah, that would be good to have on hand or, oh, we use this fairly frequently. Like um, an ice pack would be good, you know, a hot water bottle. Just think a little bit outside of the normal because these are things we maybe don't use on a daily basis, but when we need them, we do need them. Um, I'm going to put some informative links down in the description box, so make sure to check uh, down there. I will also put a link to the rest of the videos that have been in this series and other prepping videos I've done. So if you want to check those out, go in the description box, you should find it there. Thanks for coming along with me on this. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. It was really nice of you to do that. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. It was nice talking to you, and you take care.